Welcome to another Ziva math video. In this video, we will learn the steps to convert fractions to decimals. First, these charts contain the most common fractions you'll come across, especially in problems that you have to work with both decimals and fractions. It'll save you time and create fewer steps to solve the problems if you have these memorized. Let's take a look at the steps when you're given a fraction to convert to a decimal. In this example, we're going to convert 5 eighths into a decimal, and to do that, you're going to divide your numerator by your denominator, which means the 5 will be on the inside and the 8 will be on the outside, and you're going to work this like a division problem. So we have 5 divided by 8, which we can't do, so we're going to add a decimal behind the 5 because that's where the decimal would be in a whole number. And if you remember back to dividing decimals, you need to bring that decimal point straight up so it's in the right place in your answer. So 5 divided by 8 is 0, so we'll have the 0 in front of the decimal, and we can add a 0 behind the decimal in our dividend to get us started. So now we have 50 divided by 8, and 50 divided by 8 is 6. 6 times 8 is 48. Then we'll subtract, and when we subtract, we get 2. And we're going to add another 0 and bring it straight down, because we want to go out far enough to see either do we have a repeating decimal or where we're going to need to round. So now we have 20 divided by 8, which is 2. 2 times 8 is 16. And 20 minus 16 is 4. And we're going to add another 0 and bring it straight down because we want to round to the hundredths place if we're going to round. So we have 40 divided by 8. And 40 divided by 8 is 5. 5 times 8 is 40. And when we subtract, we get 0. And since we get 0, we don't need to add another 0 to bring it down. This will be our answer. And because it's a terminating decimal, we'll leave it at 625 thousandths. So 5 eighths as a decimal is 625 thousandths. For our second example, we have 2 ninths, and we're going to convert this fraction to a decimal following the same steps. We're going to divide the numerator by the denominator, which means your numerator of 2 needs to be on the inside, and your denominator of 9 needs to be on the outside because you're dividing 2 by 9. Then you'll add the decimal point behind the 2 and bring it straight up so it's in the correct place in your answer. 2 divided by 9 is 0. So we'll place the 0 above the 2, and then we're going to need to add a 0 to our dividend. So we'll have 20 divided by 9. And now we're working behind the decimal point in our quotient. So 20 divided by 9 is 2. 2 times 9 is 18. And when we subtract, 20 minus 18 is 2. So we'll add a 0 and bring it straight down. And if you've noticed, now we have the same problem that we just worked. We're going to have 20 divided by 9. 20 divided by 9 is 2. 2 times 9 is 18. And when we subtract, we're going to get 2 again. So this is going to be a repeating decimal. So we don't need to go any further. We know that 2 ninths is equal to 2 tenths, and we're going to show that this is a repeating decimal by putting the line above the 2. The third fraction we're going to convert to a decimal is 5 elevenths, and again, we're going to follow that same process. So we're going to take the numerator and we're going to divide it by the denominator, which means our numerator of 5 is going to go on the inside, our denominator of 11 is going to go on the outside, so we can divide 5 by 11. We'll need to add the decimal behind the 5 because that's where a decimal is in a whole number and we're going to bring it straight up so that we start off our problem with our decimal in the correct place in our quotient. Then we have 5 divided by 11. 5 divided by 11 is 0. And so to continue with the problem, we'll need to add a 0 to our dividend behind the decimal so we can do 50 divided by 11. 50 divided by 11 is 4. 4 times 11 is 44, and then we're going to subtract. 50 minus 44 is 6. 
And from here, we're going to add another zero to bring down because we need to figure out, do we have a terminating decimal, a repeating decimal, or a number that we're going to need to round? So we're going to add that zero and bring it down. Now we have 60. 60 divided by 11 is 5 because 5 times 11 is 55. And we're going to subtract 60 minus 55 is 5. And if we add another 0 to bring down, we'll have 50 divided by 11 again, like we did in our very first step. 50 divided by 11 is 4. 4 times 11 is 44. And when we subtract, we'll get 6. And if you notice, if I were to add another 0 and bring it down, then I'll be at 60 again, just like I was back in this step. So we're going to have a repeating decimal. If I worked another step out, then behind that last 4, I would have another 5. So 5 elevenths as a decimal is 45 hundredths with the line above both the 4 and the 5 to show that what is repeating is the 45. For our final example, we have 3 sevenths. And to turn 3 sevenths into a decimal, we're going to follow the same steps of dividing our numerator by our denominator. So again, the 3 will go on the inside, the 7 will go on the outside, and then we're going to work it like a regular division problem by adding the decimal point behind the 3, bringing that decimal point straight up so it's in the correct place in our quotient. And 3 divided by 7 is 0. So the next thing I'm going to need to do is to add the zero behind the decimal point in my dividend so that I'll have 30 divided by 7. 30 divided by 7 is 4. And 4 times 7 is 28. And your next step will be to subtract 30 minus 28 is 2. After we subtract, we'll need to add another 0 to our dividend to bring down because, again, you need to determine whether you have a terminating decimal, a repeating decimal, or a decimal where you're going to need to round. So when I add the 0 and bring it down, I have 20 divided by 7. 20 divided by 7 is 2. 2 times 7 is 14. And when we subtract, we'll get 6. Then we'll add another 0 to bring down. So we'll have 60 divided by 7. 60 divided by 7 is 8, because 8 times 7 is 56. And then I will subtract 60 minus 56, and I'll get 4. And now I've gone far enough to be able to tell whether I'm going to have a repeating decimal, a terminating decimal, or a decimal number where I'm going to need to round. And so we have 3 sevenths, and that's going to equal 43 hundredths because I'm going to round to the hundredths place, which is where the 2 is. And behind the 2 is an 8, which means I'll need to round up and make that 2 a 3. So 3 sevenths is equal to 43 hundredths. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to Ziva Math for more videos.